Okay, so question number nine is the last question in the biopsychology topic, and it is an eight-mark essay on outline and evaluate one or more ways of studying the brain. Okay, now when you get questions like this, it's not a trick question. People often think that it is. You can get the full eight marks by just talking about one way. Okay, it just depends on how you prefer to do it. Okay, if you have one way of studying the brain that you think you can write a three mark outline for and talk about two evaluation points, then by all means just do one. However, if you think you're going to struggle to get that level of detail, then keep it with two. Okay, it's completely your call. All right, the mark distribution is, of course, three marks for the outline and five marks for the evaluation section, which means that you're going to want two evaluation paragraphs. Okay, now something to just bear in mind or kind of remember for ways of studying the brain the evaluations are a little bit strange because they're quite short, which means that as a general rule, an evaluation paragraph is going to have two points in it but they're going to be fairly short points, okay? So I've got a strength which is made up of two individual points. One is the fact that it has good spatial resolution, and the other one is that it's non-invasive, but that's going to make up one strength paragraph, whereas I have a limitation paragraph, which is also going to be made up of two points, one that it's expensive and one that it has poor temporal resolution. OK, I am only going to be talking about one way of studying the brain just because I prefer to do it that way and to get as much detail in as I possibly can. But like I said before, it isn't the only way of doing it. It's just the way that I want to do it. OK, so whatever way you want to do it is absolutely fine. So let's get into this essay. So here is the outline. One way of studying the brain is the use of functional magnetic resonance imaging, which is fMRIs. fMRIs are all about monitoring changes in brain activity by measuring changes in blood flow. Then I'm going to give a little bit of an explanation as to what I mean there. And that's all about when areas of the brain get more active, they need more oxygen. Okay. And then that allows us to produce a 3D image showing which areas of the brain are involved in certain mental processes. Okay, so it's effectively a brain imaging technique that allows us to establish localization of function. Okay, so if you kind of look back through that outline, you can see that I've effectively got three sections. I've got what it is, how it works, and what it then allows us to do. Okay, so whatever way of studying the brain you've chosen to talk about here, it will probably follow a very, very similar sort of structure. So moving on, we then have a strength. So we have, it doesn't rely on the use of radiation, which means that it is non-invasive. And then in addition to that, it has very high spatial resolution, which means that it can depict details to the millimeter. Okay, so then my therefore sentence, my conclusion sentence, for this strength is that not only can it clearly depict active areas in the brain, which is important for research into localization of function, it can do so safely. So you see how I've got one conclusion sentence that brings it all together. All right, and then my limitation is slightly shorter, but that doesn't matter. We've got one bit of limitation, which is that it is expensive. So that means it's not necessarily always going to be available to everybody. Um, and then we also have poor temporal resolution. And what does that mean? Well, that means that there is about a five second time lag between the neuronal firing in the brain and the image that appears on the screen, which means that it may not truly represent brain activity in real time. OK, so there's the limitation. There's the strength, and there is the outline. I hope that's made sense, and I will see you in Research Methods.